if I read it. Yeah. Okay. Um, you know, looking at East Carolina, uh, talking about a team that's won their last three games, very impressed with their quarterback. I think he started 30 games. Uh, they got a running back that's one of the more explosive running backs in our league. You look at their defense, their defense leading the league in interceptions and tackles for loss. So, a uh, very good team. Uh, they played South Carolina very close. Uh, you know, and like I said, they got some momentum right now. We're going to have to play uh, good football. We are glad to be back home. Uh, we had a short practice last night. It was good to get back on the field with the guys after a tough loss. And, uh, you know, that's two, two losses uh, that were tough losses. They weren't just losses, they were tough losses. Uh, I'm real proud of our team, the way they're handling it. Like I said before, we got a lot of winners in the locker room. They came out practice and they were ready to ready to go for this week. And we're going to have to get ready. This is a good team we're playing, and we're going to, have to play good football. Questions, Coach? What do you think about the running back for ECU in terms of his explosiveness? Yeah, I th you just said it. it's explosiveness that stands out to me. I mean, big plays. I don't know how many he's had over 50 yards, but there's a lot of them when you look at the big play cut up. And, He's a one-play drive type running back. I mean, he can take it to the house anywhere on the field. We're going to have to do a good job containing him. And then, you know, last week they were really balanced against, uh, you know, a two-lane team that uh, took Oklahoma down to the, the wire. So, uh, I mean, what, 300-yard rush, almost 300-yard pass and something like that. The quarterback's a threat. The running back's a big play guy. Gus, I know you talked about him after the game Saturday, but when you go back and watch the film, what did you like that Mikey did? I thought Mikey for the first – Time he's played, you know, uh, starting college football on the road. I thought he handled himself well. Um, I thought he, um, you know, knew exactly what he was doing, what he was reading. Uh, he protected the football. That's what you always worry about from a true freshman, just making the monumental mistakes. He didn't do that. Um, you know, before the game, uh, you know, I had my own, and he didn't seem overwhelmed, nervous, all that. But he just had the calmness about him. It was good for him to get. Uh, a game under his belt. And really, from our coach's standpoint, my standpoint, we learned a lot about him. You never know until the real thing. So it was good for him. That's the positive. Uh, you know, the thing about him, he'll continue to get better, but I think he did a lot of good things. Coach, you talked about the 24 hour rule after a game, win or lose. Obviously, that's easier to do for some games than others. You said the team got back together last night. What did you see from the guys? Yeah, and like I said, there's, there's, there's losses and there's tough losses really tough losses and I think back to back we've had two really tough losses um, you know so you know, it says a lot about the leadership of our team the way that they came out spirited ready to practice the way anybody had their head down loafing around I mean, we got a mature group of leaders and uh, that's what you got to do I mean, hey, that's behind us there's nothing we can do we got to correct and we got to move forward with this game and you know, we need to figure out a way to win this game we're playing at home we're very excited to be in front of our home crowd and I think that'll do good for Yes, it doesn't sound like you're worried about a letdown after two potentially, you know, really disappointing games. So, is there something that you do to guard against that, or you just rely on your leaders? Or yeah, you rely on your leaders. It's, it's all about all about leaders, and we got strong leaders. I've said that you know, for a long time. We got a lot of a lot of winners in the, the locker room, and uh, you know, so I know our guys are going to fight. They're going to continue to fight. They're going to continue to to get better. That's their mindset. But uh, that's that has all to do with our players and our leadership. So in the name of putting the loss behind you, what are kind of the growth opportunities you'd be looking for doing practice uh, during practice going into the ECU game? Yeah, the great thing is you know, we, we got a lot of ways to improve. Uh, us as coaches are responsible for the improvement and uh, you know, we've got to really focus on that uh, this week so our guys can play fast and, uh, and uh, execute. Yes, these were close games. It's not like you're getting blown out, but what what is this team not doing that they need to do to close out? Yeah, it's, uh, you know, really just finishing. Um, like I said, had opportunities to win both those games. Uh, it's usually a play or two either way. Uh, that's what you focus on, I know, from a fan standpoint. It's easy to focus on the very end, but from a head coach's standpoint, you focus on the entirety of the game. There's a lot of things that we did even before the last drive that caused us to be in that situation. We were up 30-17 with uh, two minutes left going the third quarter, we got to win the game. And uh, so that's what we're focused on, focused on the entirety to put ourselves in position to win. Um, and like I said, anytime it's mistakes, that's on coaches, and we got to do a better job helping our guys correct that. What was your team doing so well in the first two games against the run on defense that you've been struggling the last two? Um, 
you know, the quarterback for Louisville is a handful. I think everybody can see that. Uh, last week was a completely different deal with the style of offense. I, I am confident that uh, we are a good run defense. I am confident in that, you know, traditional offenses. And, uh, we'll keep working on uh, building upon that. Um, you know, the continuity, we've got guys, we, we know where they need to be, I think, now, position-wise. Uh, you know, we got a couple people down last game. Hopefully, we'll get those guys back, and uh, I think all of the above will help with that. And the special teams had their share of issues the other night. What, what, what does that unit need to do going forward to improve? Is it just execution detail, or? Well, we, we need to protect on the punt. I mean, it, it's really simple. You protect on the punt. And, you know, in a punter's defense, he gets one blocked, and then, of course, you know, they come after it again, he speeds it up, he shanks it off the right, but it, it starts with protection, and uh, we're working extremely hard to correct that one. You just mentioned, obviously, you were missing guys against Navy. What are the chances Isaiah Bowser and guys like Jalen Robinson are available yeah. long-term, or what does that look yeah, like? Yeah, we're, we're, I'm still going with the week-to-week, -week, um, you know, on those two. Hopefully, we'll have, get our defensive guys back soon, probably Thursday, I'll have a better idea of that. Um, like I said, it would be good to get those impact players back. Coach, could you talk a little bit about Mr. Armstrong? He had 22 tackles against Navy. Yeah, he, he's got a nose for the football. Um, you know, we knew that when we recruited him. Uh, he's a guy that he's really a bright spot, uh, starting to settle in, um, and uh, a guy we can rely on. When you don't have Isaiah Bowser, how does it change your offense? What are you doing differently? Well, you know, it's kind of more running back by committee. I mean, Bowser, is, he's an NFL player. You know, when you lose a guy, that's an impact loss, you know. And, but it's next man up. Uh, the good thing about it, now we've got two games uh, that we've had those guys get experience. I thought Johnny made some really explosive plays for us. Um, you know, Trillian Coles has been a guy that's just missed for consistency. You can really trust and count on him. And Mark got a chance to get in there and do some things. So. You know, it's really running back by committee until we get him back. Came good as a defensive tackle. Saw a lot of playing time the other night. Um, obviously, with Ricky Barber being out, what did you see from him? I know he had a couple of uh, two, two huge plays with the force fumbles. Yeah, Cam good. He's a, he's an impact player too. I mean, he's just so quick and so explosive. And you know, he's a veteran guy. And he made some big plays for us. Played a lot of snaps. You know, and you know he got banged up. He came back. He showed a lot of toughness. Um, you know, he's a he's a really good player. With Jalen out, you know, forever, how long, and other guys have to step up. Amari Johnson had some nice runs coming across and had a couple catches. What do you like from him, and what, how do you think? Yes, yeah, when he has a ball in his hands, he does some really good stuff. Um, you know, like I said, we just uh, we got some some young receivers. Uh, we're continuing to grow and develop, and uh, you know, they're going to have opportunities. Obviously, it's year one, year two, and two. How big is this game? Just I don't know how big you are in momentum, but yeah. you look at the big picture for the rest of the season. Yeah, I mean, I, every game is big. Obviously, when you come off a loss like that, you want to get back on the field. Thinking about it, we're playing a very quality team, and it would be a good win for us. So we we need to do everything in our power to do that. Um, looking forward to playing them. I know our guys are ready to get back out there and give it a go. What do you think Joey Gatewood brings to the offense, and what do you hope that he can bring? Yeah, Joey provides, uh, you know, a different kind of uh, preparation for a defense. Um, you know, he's only been here a little over a month, so he's still kind of settling in uh, to what we're doing. And, you know, he's got a chance to continue to help our team and really think he will moving forward. Could you elaborate a little bit more about what one start means for Mikey Keen just to go back in the film room? It's different than practice. Yeah, I think, you know, big picture, uh, his teammates – know more what to expect with him leading. I know from my standpoint, I know what to expect more. And that really helps everything. And uh, he's a guy that can efficiently run our offense. And that, that's what's really exciting. He's got a lot of winner in him. Um, and he's a tough guy. And like I said, if you look, there was a couple plays that he got us out of bad place and just threw the ball away. When maybe a, a, an inexperienced quarterback would have taken a sack or something like that. So he's got some qualities that are very impressive, and that's really what stood out to me. Um, you know, above everything else the other day, other than protecting the football. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Thank you.